Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wassalatu wassalam ala rasulillah. Continuing in volume two of Riyadh Salihin, book number 16, the book of dua, i.e. supplication. Chapter 253, the superiority of the awliya and their marvels. Allah the Exalted says in surah number 10, verses 62 through 64, of which the meaning is, no doubt, verily the awliya of Allah, i.e. those who believe in the oneness of Allah and fear Allah much, abstain from all kinds of sins and evil deeds which he has forbidden, and love Allah much, perform all kinds of good deeds which he has ordained, no fear shall come upon them, nor shall they grieve. Those who believed in the oneness of Allah, i.e. Islamic monotheism, and used to fear Allah much by abstaining from evil deeds and sins and by doing righteous deeds. For them are glad tidings in the life of the present world, i.e. through a righteous dream seen by the person himself or shown to others. And in the hereafter, no change can there be in the words of Allah. This is indeed the supreme success. Surah number 19, verses 25 and 26. And shake the trunk of palm tree towards you. It will let fall fresh ripened dates upon you. So eat and drink. Every time he, Zachariah, alayhi salam, entered al-mihrab, to visit her, he found her supplied with sustenance. He said, O Maryam, from where have you got this? She said, This is from Allah. Verily, Allah provides sustenance to whom He will without limit. This is from Surah Ali Imran, verses 37. The young men said to one another, And when you withdraw from them and that which they worship, <coughs> except Allah, then seek refuge in the cave. Your Lord will open a way for you from his mercy and will make easy for you your affair, i.e. will give you what you will need of provision. And you might have seen the sun when it rose, declining to the right from their cave and when it set turning away from them to the left. Surah number 18, verses 16 and 17. Narrated, Abdurrahman ibn Abu Bakr radiallahu anhuma, the companions of As-Suffa were poor people. Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, whoever has food enough for two people should take a third one from among them. And whoever has food enough for four person should take fifth or sixth or say something similar. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu took three people with him while Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took ten. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu took his supper with Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and stayed there till he offered the Isha Salah. After a part of the night had passed, he returned to his house. His wife said to him, What has detained you from your guests? He said, Have you not served supper to them? She said, They refused to take supper until you came. Abdurrahman, Abu Bakr's son, or the servant, presented the meal to them, but they refused to eat. I, the narrator, <clears throat> hid myself out of fear. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, my father, rebuked me. Then he said to them, Please eat. By Allah, I will never eat the meal. Abdurrahman asked, Whenever we took a morsel of the meal, the meal grew from underneath more than that morsel we had taken grew from underneath more than that morsel we had till everybody ate to his satisfaction. Yet the remaining food was more than what was in the beginning. On seeing this, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu called his wife and said, O sister of Banu Firas, what is this? She said, O pleasure of my eyes, the food has increased thrice in quantity. Then Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu started eating. He said, my oath not to take the meal was because of shaitan. He took a morsel 
handful from it and carried the rest to Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That food remained with him. In those days there was a treaty between us and the pagans and when the period of that treaty elapsed, he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam divided us into 12 groups and every group was headed by a man. Allah knows how many men were under the command of each leader. Any, anyhow, all of them ate of the meal, Al-Bukhari and Muslim. Mm. There are some more na narration in both Al-Bukhari and Muslim with very minor differences in wording and in detail. Alhamdulillah, <laughs> This chapter concerning the karamat of the awliya. <coughs> Karama, which is the plural here, karamat, and the awliya, this is two things. Awliya is a friends or a special people. And karamat is something that Allah will honor people. It's not like what happened to the prophets, but he may call it a minor uh, miracle, okay? First of all, the verses that uh, in this chapter qualify who is the wali of Allah. Alladina amanu wa kanu yatakun. Those who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those who have taqwa, they stay away from the haram. Okay? Allah said, no fear for them, no sadness. Those people who awliya Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala perform speciality for them. It doesn't happen to the ordinary people. And he gave few example here, as example, that Maryam, alayhi salam, when she was uh, pregnant with Isa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded her or directed her to shake the palm tree, the trunk of a palm tree. You know a woman in this moment of delivering baby she doesn't have any strength to do anything. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told her to shake. And even if she is not in matter of labor, women could not shake a palm tree, not even five, six people, not men even, because you know what a palm tree is. Some of the Mufassirin said that this was not even if a palm tree, this only was a trunk. So there is no way dates to come. And regardless, whatever is for full a tree or part of a tree, is still a, a woman during time of delivery in baby could not shake a palm tree. But here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show a karama, to show a, a special things for Maryam, because she one is selected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and said, Tasaqatu alayki rota banjaniya. Now a fresh dates will be coming. Also is shown in another place that Kullama Dakhala Alaya Zakariya Mihrab that when Zakariya used to come and see Maryam in the place of the prayer, he would see fruits of the summer in time of winter. See food that came to her in her chamber and nobody supposed to be coming inside the building. How this food came inside? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give her, bless her with this food with not any assistance of a human being. So as a result of this, when he asked her, she said that this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The third example, he talked about the people of the cave, okay? They left their town, their society, because those people was kuffar, the mushrikeen, worshiping others than Allah. And Allah directed them to go to the cave as a refuge. But look to the, what Allah made. Allah made the sun. I'm not talking about a palm tree or some food. Allah made the whole sun change its, its course. Protection for those believers who had hid it in the cave. So if the person really devoted to Allah, and try to get closer to Allah as much as possible, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can make even the whole thing change because this person or because this group. But we have to be sincere 
in our course and our devotion to Allah, if we do this, Allah will make something is not normal. Okay? And he talking here about the family of Abu Bakr with only food enough for the guest, which was three, four, five people, the max. Okay? But how Allah made the food grow? Every time they take little bit food, the food grow up more and go uh, up more. You see? So Allah, and this is not limited to a time of Maryam or the time of the Prophet or the family of Abu Bakr Siddiq. It can happen to any one of us if we really get to debase ourselves to Allah and be really about the Sirat al Mustaqim, as Allah wants, okay? Now you became from Awliyaullah, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, La khawfun alayhim, wa lahum yahzanun. No fear for them, no sadness. No fear for them in this life, no sadness for them after they die. So we have to believe, is this part of the Quran? Believing in the Karamat. What's the term that he used, uh, the chapter? The head title uh, superiority of the Aliyah and their marvels. Okay, their what marvels? The okay, this is the uh, word in the sense that we say in Arabic karama, karamat. Okay, marvels that Allah will make something special for you out of the ordinary things. Okay, so you see a sun always rise in this direction, but because those people they really believe in Allah made migration separate themselves from their town, from their family, for the sake of Allah. So Allah caused the sun itself, the sun, okay, to move from its course so not to be shining on the cave and nobody will see them. And also to be protection for their bodies because every day the sun will rise and stay for about six seven hours and hitting them and they sleeping could not it will mess up their skin but allah made the sun move for them okay so if the people really devoted themselves to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they try to live this deen as much as they can allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make what you may call it a miracle for them as individual or as family or as a community it can happen and this not limited to any time it can happen but one last thing i want to say it that this it tied to one condition what الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَكَانُوا يَتَّقُونَ as a result of this, some of the scholars, they say, if you see a man flying in the air, walking in the water, don't believe him unless you observe his deed with the Quran and the Sunnah. Okay? Because there is some people, they supported by the shaitans. Okay? The shayateen will lift them up in the air. And you will see them with your eyes. They walk in the water. But, Allah said, Ala inna awliya Allah, la khawfun alayhim wa lahum yahzanun, alladhina amanu wa kanu yattakun. Those who believe and those who have the taqwa. But if some people dance in the whole night with the music and they did not even pray Aisha or Fajr and they call him, he's a sheikh, he has a tariqah, he's making dhikr all the night, jumping up and down. And after this, you see him, you understand, he, he, he touched a man or he left him with his hand like this. So it doesn't matter because the shaitan will be supporting. So you have to know there is awliya for Allah and there is awliya for the shaitan. There is a friend of Allah and there is friends of the shaitan. And the shaitan can assist those deviant people that you will see something out of the ordinary thing but does not mean for you to think that they are from awliya Allah until you check their deed. Again, it's Quran and Sunnah. Okay? So those people are not supported 
by Allah, they supported by devils. So don't be deceived by them and don't follow them. You have to check to see. So if man doesn't know his deed, doesn't go to the mosque, he's doing the haram, and after this you see him flying in the air, don't be shocked. Don't be deceived by what you see because the shaitan is supporting these people to deceive other people. May Allah make us from the awliya of Allah, Amen. not from the awliya of the shaitan. Ameen. Alhamdulillah. Yes. Is there something like uh, during the time of Pharaoh and Musa? Excuse me? You know, when Moses throw the bar down and, and Pharaoh had his people throw their bar down, and yeah, but the difference, the difference, let me explain something very important. This is important question. These things that you're talking about happening to the prophets and the Allah supporting the prophet with miracles. This is something greater than the small things that we talk. This we call mu'jiza, okay, a miracle. But the awliya of Allah is normally people like me and you, okay, that Allah will give them a support in certain time, okay? But what's happened to, to, to the prophet is something that is not questionable. You understand? Because they are the prophets. So we're not talking about Musa and the Muhammad and Isa. We're talking about a regular people who devoted to Allah. Allah can give them something special, okay? Yeah. To help them in time of difficulty, or to ease, you understand, burden in them, or something like this, okay? Yeah. Alhamdulillah. You remember what chapter we were in? Two hundred fifty-three. Two five three. Okay. Last